Right, welcome to this first video where we're going to investigate the UNESCO ICT competency framework for teachers. And basically we're trying to understand the lay of the land. It's not just a list of 18 competencies, they are organized into quite a sophisticated relationship. So let's spend just a few moments understanding what this relationship is. If we look very carefully at the grid, or the matrix, you'll notice that there are six bands or six rows and we've got three columns. So the rows are the six areas where ICT can play a significant role in helping teachers achieve their daily responsibilities. The first row is at a very high level, it's understanding ICT in education and specifically the policy environment per country or institution. What does it say about ICT and what is the teacher's role, or the educator's role in making sure that these directives are achieved? Uh, the second one, curriculum and assessment, basically looks at how can ICT support teachers implement the curriculum, how can it support the assessment and uh, the collection of data about student attainment, etc. Our third band or row or aspect is pedagogy and you'll see here it ranges from ICT to support traditional ways of teaching, uh, moving on to more progressive methodologies and then ultimately into a position where the educators are creators and they encourage their students to be creators of knowledge. The fourth band or aspect, application of digital skills, focuses on software and hardware, especially in the early phases of knowledge acquisition. It does look at the tech and the skills required in order to use that tech effectively. Organization and administration. This is ICT skills in order to manage and set up ICT for effective learning in different environments. For example, uh, how do you set up an ICT lab in your school or organize them so that they work in clusters or perhaps ICT in the classroom, mobiles and what about virtual classrooms? So all of those type of organization issues as well as school management systems. The sixth band or aspect, teacher professional learning, looks at the skills that are required in order to continue lifelong professional development. Which brings us to the three levels, knowledge acquisition, knowledge deepening and knowledge creation. The thinking is that educators are all different, their proficiencies are different, some are newbies, some are experienced. So there should be a place within the grid which allows teachers to find what is their next growth point. Knowledge acquisition looks specifically at awareness. To what extent are people aware of the potential benefits, the potential uses and the potential dangers etc. Knowledge deepening looks at how teachers might apply what they have learnt within an teaching and learning environment or school administration and knowledge creation is more transformative. Educators now are knowledge creators and they encourage their students to become 21st century thinkers with all the creativity, the analytical prowess, the ability to evaluate, to work cooperatively etc etc. So now that we understand the rows or aspects and the columns or levels then you can see that it is at the intersection of the rows and columns 18 competencies are positioned. In the next video we'll look at these 18 competencies and also how the framework suggests they be broken up into smaller objectives. The framework also offers some examples or suggestions about what can be done in order to help teachers acquire these objectives.